<clears throat> Good evening and welcome. At this time, I call to order Muscogee Creek National Council emergency session, July 15, 2021. Time is 6.01 p.m. At this time, I'd like to ask second speaker, Daryl Proctor, to do the invocation, please. Amen. Thanks, second speaker. <clears throat> Roll call, National Council Legislative Research Specialist, Alicia Strobel. Randall Hicks. Present. Mary Crawford. Present. Joyce Deer. Patrick, excuse. Excuse, Patrick. Joseph Hicks. Robert Huft. James Jennings. Here. Adam Jones. Here. William Lowe. Here. Anna Marshall. Charles McHenry. Here. Thomas Yahola Osborne. Present. Daryl Proctor. Here. Mark Randolph. Lucian Tiger. Present. Speaker, you have 11 present, four absent. 11 present, 4 absent, constitutes a quorum. All business conducted will be official. DR 21-108, a tribal resolution of the Muscogee Creek Nation authorizing the principal chief to submit a bid to purchase real property located in Okmulgee County, Oklahoma, which will, which will be sold at a public auction. Sponsors Charles McHenry. Make a motion to pass. Motion made by Representative McHenry to adopt TR-21-108. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Representative Jones. Discussion. Any discussion? Ask Jesse Allen. Mr. Allen, make sure that speaker's on, please, or microphone. Green yes. light. Yep. Okay, you're good. Thank you, speaker. <clears throat> This is, we have an opportunity to purchase property here in Omulgee. It's located, I think we all know where the property is. It's the Beeline property. Um, we, first we try to go through the, um, the contract with, and the council uh, declined to go that option. So we have another option to go through the public auction. I can't tell you when the public auction will be held. Um, I have been speaking with the lending agency for this, so it is forthcoming, but I don't have an exact date. Um, there is, we, back in 2019, the council appropriated money for this property. They appropriated 850 for the purchase price, 190,000 for the environmental remediation, uh, 150 for building demolition, and incidental cost of 25,000. So in 2018, we had a environmental phase two study done on this property by A&M Engineering, and they determined that there wasn't a significant impact on the property that would um, be detrimental to us purchasing it. Um, there, will, there will need to be some dirt work removal to um, the, based on their recommendation and that's why I have that included in this uh, appropriation um, so my request for this current legislation is to use the 850,000 that was appropriated in the NCA 19142 and use that as the a maximum bid price if needed for an auction if uh, if that arises. Okay. Thank you, sir. Representative Jones. Motion going in executive session. Motion made by Representative Jones going in executive session. Do I have a second? Second by Representative McHenry. Any discussion? Hearing now, roll call vote, please. Adam Jones? Yes. William Lowe? Yes. Anna Marshall? 
Charles McHenry? Yes. Thomasina Hola Osborne? Yes. Daryl Proctor? Yes. Lucian Tiger? Yes. Mary Crawford? Yes. Joyce Steer? Yes. Robert Huft? Yes. James Jennings? Speaker, you have 11 in favor, zero against. 11 in favor, zero against. That motion passes. We are in the executive session. Who would you like to stay? Everybody's right? here. You don't have to leave. Nobody has to leave. It's just. Just a little summary of the executive session. Discussion concerning purchase of real property in Oakmoe, Oklahoma. No vote or action was taken during that executive session. So, so now we are back to the main motion, which is to adopt TR-21-108. Speaker. Representative Tiger. Thanks, Speaker. Make a motion to postpone TR-21-108 indefinitely. Representative Tiger made a motion to postpone TR-21-108. I have a second. Second. Second by Representative Jones. Any discussion? Representative Huff. Does this uh, hurt us in any way by doing this? I just don't. I just don't know the timeline <clears throat> from the um, bank's perspective, and <clears throat> I don't think it's really going to hurt us. It's just that we're going to have to. I'm just going because. Uh, they're willing to uh, help negotiate the contract. So I can go back to them and say, hey, you know, the council, they've declined to go that route. And if you decide to go to auction, then we'll just uh, see how the cards lay out and we'll just go that way. Um, so we're just gonna have to stay on top of the uh, timeline and make sure that you know, we can meet before then. I guess with that said, this is put, if we, don't postpone this, but does it put us in a better position with the bank? What's the money with the bank? That's what we have to find out. I think we could possibly get it for a lower amount if we hold out and wait for the auction as opposed to going the other way. But there's also the risk of someone else and that's, that's always the risk, but going to the auction as opposed to a contract. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Representative, Representative Tiger. Thank you, Speaker. Mr. Allen, my concern is I just would like to see the three appraisals. Yeah. Because ours was five fifty, five seventy five, something yeah, like that. Yeah, theirs was. Uh, yes, yeah, so, right. I mean, so it's probably somewhere in the middle. Right. But I understand what you're saying. Because, like, in regards to Representative Hub's comments, if that's the case, once you get the three appraisals, then you'll know what two thirds yep. value is gonna be, and then you could offer that. Yep. That's the route route we chose to go, yep. correct? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Representative Tiger. Representative Jones. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. So I guess where I'm kind of confused at is we have two appraisals, but we're talking about two separate things here is what's going on. We're talking about the auction price and what the bank's asking. So we haven't heard what the bank's asking. Does the, does the bank have a number that they've given you? That's kind of why we went so to eight, eight hundred. all that out. They've given me the 800 price. 800 price. Okay. Yes. All right. So that's what's owed against the property. Yes. So, yeah. All right. That's what I need to know. Thanks, Speaker. Yeah. Thank you, Representative Jones. Any other discussion? Representative McHenry. So if we go to bid at this auction and they, they give you the starting price bid, so we're post is the postponement to say that that what the number is that we're going to figure out on how far we're going to go with it is that <coughs> so saying that uh there's a possibility we might go higher than even what the uh, original which was appropriated for on the nca 19142 that's a possibility. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Henry. Any other discussion? 
Hearing none, the motion on the floor is to postpone. Postpone indefinitely. Postpone indefinitely. Okay. Hearing no more discussion, roll call vote, please. Lucian Tiger? Yes. Mary Crawford? Yes. Boyce Deer? Yes. Joseph Hicks? Yes. Robert Huft? No. James Jennings? Adam Jones? Yes. William Lowe? Yes. Anna Marshall? Yes. Charles McHenry? Yes. Thomas Hola Osborne? Yes. Carol Proctor? Yes. Speaker, you have 11 in favor, one against. 11 in favor, one against. That motion is adopted. Postpone indefinitely. NCA 21-080, a law of the Mongolia Creek Nation approving the 2022 Indian Housing Plan. Sponsors, Thomas Fien, Yehola Osborne. Speaker, I make a motion to adopt. Motion made by Representative Yehola Osborne to adopt NCA 21-080. Do I have a second? Second by Representative Marshall. Discussion. Ms. Beauty. Good evening, good evening, National Council. Uh, thank you for allowing me to present today the Indian Housing Block Grant, which is the Indian Housing Plan for fiscal year 2022. Um, I did take a review as requested. Um, I just made some minor changes, but the one major change that will be implemented if this plan is approved, it's going to be extending your current jurisdiction by 20 miles beyond your current jurisdiction. And the only exception will be for those who are 55 years and older. Um, that was some discussion that had taken place. And what I've learned is that we do have current homes that are just beyond our existing boundary. And when they do request assistance from housing, we're unable to serve them at this time. So that was one of the major, major changes that we put in the plan. Um, there were some minor revisions on wording. I, I know through HUD they want to see justification as to what the need is for the nation. So we pretty much included that information in the plan to continue to provide HUD that data annually so that they know there's always going to be, and more than likely, there always is going to be a need for the nation to provide housing for its citizens. If you look at the review, I did provide also an Excel sheet just summarizing the Indian housing plan. I don't know. Um, when you do take a look at it, you will notice that there is some money available that has not been obligated or has been budgeted for any specific project. In, in, on that Excel sheet, you will notice in bright yellow on the bottom, it states balance of unex unexpected funds and an estimate. And that is the total amount of dollars that housing has available to utilize for development or other programs um, that will be HUD guideline based. We also provided a map that will show where that boundary will go um, with the 20 mile expansion from your current jurisdiction. As you can see, our overall estimate for the Indian Housing Block Grant for fiscal year 2022 is at a current est um, estimate at 15,890,000. And that also, we have the VASH program, the estimate grant amount for 2022 is 215,000. Thank you, Ms. Beauty. Any questions for Ms. Beauty? Representative Jones? 
Thank you, Speaker. Thank you for coming. One question I do have is, is I was looking at um, if a citizen needs fencing, I seen that was actually in um, part of security and crime prevention. Would they be able to get fencing um, through that and through housing? Yes, um, I believe it's been a part of your plan for the last couple of years, and I know that they have been utilizing this specific line item to put in camera um, type activities for your rental developments to ensure the safety of your current tenants. Um, but there has been some discussion for future planning of possibly um, looking at security, you know, for those type of properties as well. One other question, uh, what about Three Ponds project? At, at, at this time, I'm not sure if that is included in the overall new construction, but that would de definitely be one area that I think would be important in having the security because you're gonna be serving your elder citizens. And of course, we wanna make sure that they're safe. So I will follow up to see if that's included in the current development. If not, we can obligate some of these funds for that. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Representative Jones. Representative Jennings. Thank you, Speaker. Ms. Beauty, so by extending the boundaries by 20 miles, how many uh, group site homes are included other than the one at OK? Uh, can, you, can you repeat that question again? Yes. So with the Boundaries being extended by 20 miles, how many other group home sites does this include besides the site at OK? Okay, um, because I'm not real familiar with the actual sites yet at this point, I would have to go back and pull that information to see, you know, what additional sites it will include by expanding that jurisdiction. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Representative Jennings. Representative Lowe. Madam Speaker, Ms. Beauty, does the language just say 55 and older past the 20 miles or, or, or special needs? Um, at this point, what we wrote in the plan is just 55 and older. Uh -huh. I think our main focus was to see once we implement it, you know, how many are we going to serve? And then if we, you know, we see that, yes, it's a great thing for our citizens, then we have talked about even opening it up to everyone, to include Great. everyone. Appreciate it, Madam mm -hmm. Speaker. Thank you, Representative Lowe. Representative Yehola Altsborn. Ms. Beauty, as far as the um, services go, which particular programs are we gonna go 20 miles outside of our reservation? So the changes that have been made to include the 55 and older um citizens that it will include the program of the minor repair of privately owned homes acquisition or development of home ownership and lease to purchase program thank you and i just want to make a comment um i have had a couple of elderly citizens in the southern area reach out to me in regards to two programs that she mentioned and that was the minor repair and also new construction. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Beauty. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Representative Yehola Osborne. Any other discussion? Representative Marshall. Um, Mrs. Beauty, I noticed that you're gonna develop some elderly housing units. Are any of those gonna be farther south or is it gonna continue to remain this way? The, the ones that are listed in this in this IHP are still the um, three ponds location. What happened is because we did not complete that project as we had initially planned and it's still in progress, we had to put it in this plan to show HUD that we're still working on that. So the ones identified in here are the current three ponds. But there is discussion too of additional elderly but again, I just need to get more data together on what are the specific needs of the, the nation to determine what type of locations and what type of housing we would like to move forward with. Okay. And my second question is, I know that you have the emergency rental program. Are you going to make any provisions in this housing? I don't know where it would be 
<clears throat> but is there going to be any provisions for helping people with their mortgage payments? Um, I believe right now we are in the process, and not specifically through this program, um, through the home ownership assistance program that is going to be funded here shortly. I know there's still discussion on amongst tribes on how that program will be administered. We have been in discussion with it. That program would be temporary, right. but it would be able to be utilized for for that type of housing and pay payments, mortgage payments that people fall behind on. So I think once that is in place, then that will be covered under that program. Okay, because I have several citizens in my district that have approached me, there's been at least five or six um, whose income levels have changed. They've either gone from a two, you know, two paycheck to a one paycheck, and some of them have gone from two to zero, and they just need temporary help to get caught up on their mortgage payments, and they don't qualify for anything, so. Okay, so yes, so that program, I know, again, all tribes are just waiting for them to give their final um, comments on what it can be used for. Once that's done, mm -hmm. then I believe the nation will start working on creating that policy to be able to assist those homeowners who need the assistance. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Beauty. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Representative Marshall. Representative Lowe. No, Speaker, just quickly, Ms. Beauty, is there a new expected completion date for Three Ponds by chance? You know, I've, I've um, been asking, you know, how long that has been out there. And I do know that the construction builder, I believe, has, has finally begun to start the project. Um, due to our weather and so forth, I know, and then of course COVID has been the obstacle for us. Um, as of right now, I don't have an exact date, but that is one of the department goals is to make sure that we start following up and figuring out when are we gonna meet those deadlines um, for homes. We did hire a project manager to specifically help, you know, make sure that we stay on top of all our projects that we have in place, but I don't have a definite answer yet. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Representative Lowe. Any other discussion? Ms. Beauty, I have one for you. I'm glad that you did extend the 20 mile radius, but how did you select 20 miles? You know, it was pretty much relying on current staff and then, of course, you know, administration to see what would really be the need. Um, you know, for me, I thought, well, maybe we'll do five miles and so forth, but one of the things that's very unique in Oklahoma to me is that at one point we did build homes for citizens, but for whatever reasons, they weren't in the current jurisdiction or that we serve, which is kind of weird because you know through HUD, we are assisting those that are inventory inventoried homes that are still outside of our boundaries, maybe by a mile or two. But I believe it was the a history issue that maybe some land surveys weren't done correctly and that's how those homes got put in the areas so once we looked at that and we decided you know let's just try the 20 miles to see you know um, what that need is because we do have a lot of citizens calling and they might be five miles and we have to tell them we can't serve you so we felt maybe that 20 miles could capture you know as many as we could in somewhat logical reasoning way. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. I was just curious. <laughs> thank you. Any other discussion? Thank you. Representative Hicks. Thank you, Mr. Beauty. Uh, <clears throat> the one question I have is where it says elder is considered uh, 55 and older. Is that elders, um, I guess what I'm trying to say is that is 55 and older considered an elder across all programs across the tribe? I do. I don't believe so. I've noticed that that there is kind of two ages. One is 55 and one is 62. I believe it, that is a common thing, even for my own home. Certain programs will allow at 55 and some allow at 62. So no, I don't believe here in the nation it's a consistent 55 or older is considered elder. Okay, thank you. The only reason why I ask is because whenever it comes to this program, whenever people see 55 as considered an elder for this program, 
and then you jump to another program and they're like well we have to be 62 or 63 to get be considered you know only reason I'm asking that or mentioning it is because you're going to get complaints from <clears throat> all across the tribe about that because they're going to look at it and say, well, I'm 55, I'm an elder. So, anyway, that that's all I ask. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Representative Hicks. Any other discussion? Hearing none, roll call. I'm a senior, Hola Osborne. <laughs> yes. Darrell Proctor. Yes. Lucian Tiger. <laughs> Yes. Mary Crawford? Yes. Joyce Steer? Yes. Joseph Hicks? Yes. Robert Huft? Yes. James Jennings? Yes. Adam Jones? Yes. William Lowe? Yes. Anna Marshall? Yes. Charles McHenry? Yes. Speaker, you have 12 in favor, zero against. 12 in favor, zero against. That motion is adopted. NCA? Thank you, Miss Beauty. Thank you. NCA? 21084, a law of the Muscogee Creek Nation repealing MCNCA Title 16, Chapter 4, and creating new law in the new Title 50 entitled Light Horse Police Commission and authorizing an appropriation for the Light Horse Police Commission. Sponsors Adam Jones III, co sponsors Patrick Freeman Jr. Motion to adopt. Motion made by Representative Jones to adopt NCA 21084. Do I have a second? Second. Second by second Speaker Proctor. Discussion. Yes, Speaker, Speaker, I need to make a motion to also um, amend the amount for the budget on the very last page from 92, 372 to 112, 372. Oh, and adopt the substitute bill as well. My bad. Okay, so your motion is to adopt the substitute and amend page 24. Okay. Let's do your first motion, which would be a, to adopt the uh, substitute. substitute bill. Okay. So the motion on the floor is to adopt the substitute. Is that still second by a proctor? Yes. Okay. Any discussion on the substitute? Hearing none, roll call vote. Substitute. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I know that the last time that we met that uh, Representative Jones uh, had mentioned that I believe he and the Chief's office were going to get together on the legislation. Um, just curious if that happened and you guys come to a conclusion on this particular piece of legislation. Thank you, Representative Osborne. Um, actually, Attorney General and Alicia did figure out exactly what we were going to do for the amendments. That's where the substitute came into play. So that's what we have today, yes. As far as Chief and I, we haven't got to talk, no. But it's uh, Attorney General, and then I believe Attorney General Kevin Dillinger is here, assistant for any other questions. I do have a question for Attorney General. Did you see any um, thing that may be unconstitutional as you review this? I don't think our office has any issues with that. I know the Attorney General has been over it uh, thoroughly and reviewed it, and I know the substitute, I think, even came out today, reviewed that, and uh, he's good to go with the uh, current format and current uh, version of the uh, substitute. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Speaker, I can make a motion to amend the last page on page 24, um, the actual amount from 92,372 for the budget to 112,372 dollars and zero cents. Can you repeat that amount, sir? Yes, sir. It's 112,372. Point of order, Speaker. We have a motion on the floor. It's just.
Okay, so the motion on the floor is to amend the substitute on page 23 and 24 or throughout the legislation. Change 92,372 to 112, 372. Okay, throughout legislation. So that's the motion. Do I have a second? Second by Representative Proctor. Any discussion on the amendment? Just to be clear, just to be clear, that is just voting on the changes being made in this in the substitute. Yes. Any other discussion? Representative Yohal Osborne. Um, I'm just curious as if to um, Chief Phillips has seen the legislation. <clears throat> but no, Council, yes, I, I have looked it over. I've been reading over a lot of it. Um, it limits me in a lot of things and the capacity is me as the chief. Chief, uh, can you speak into the microphone, please? Right now, can you hear me? Uh, in reading over this, it lim limits me in my capacity as a chief in a lot of ways. Uh, and a lot of these things, my hands are tied on a lot of stuff. Takes the uh, duties away from me as a chief is what I'm sworn to do. Uh, Speaker, well, we're always just a member for change, change the dollar amount only at this point in time. So I think that's all we should be discussing. 100, the hundred twelve nine seventy two. Then we come back to the further discussion of the of the bill itself. I think. Okay. We're, we're all we're talking about just the change of the dollar only at this point in time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Chief Phillips, or just have a seat for a second. So the motion on the floor was to amend the legislation throughout in the amount of 112,372,000 and seconded by Proctor. So we're voting on the amendment only. Yeah. And then we will come back and then Mr. Phillips, you'll have a chance to speak then. Okay. So any more discussion on the amendment? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Adam Jones? Yes. William Lowe? Yes. Anna Marshall? Yes. Charles McHenry? Yes. Thomasine Yohola Osborne? Yes. Daryl Proctor? Yes. Lucian Tiger? Yes. Mary Crawford? Yes. Joy Steer? Yes. Joseph Fix? Yes. Robert Huft? Yes. James Jennings? Yes. Speaker, you have 12 in favor, zero against. 12 in favor, zero against. That motion passes. So now we'll go back to the main motion by Representative Jones, and that motion was to adopt a substitute. Okay. And that was seconded by Representative Proctor. Ms. Yehola, you have the floor now. Yes, sir. I'd just like to hear from Chief Phillips on this, please. Sorry about that, Chief Phillips. You have the floor now, sir. Totally fine, sir. Sorry. Now, as far as an update, I didn't know there was another one. Is there another one? Because I'm not aware of it. The uh, substitute? I've never received one. Chief, we apologize. It was sent to uh, the executive branch this morning to Whitney. I believe. I'd like to have more time to look at it because I've not seen this one. When Representative Jones did say page 24, I was looking at the old one and I don't have a page 24. While you're reviewing that, 
I'll give Representative Jones some time. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Phillips. And, and so what it does is it actually puts that back in place. Everything that you guys had before, you'll still have that and your duties will be the same. Only thing it did add in that is that the Creek Chief of Police will, or the Chief of Police for the Creek Nation will be Chief, will be Creek, and for the um, actual game warden will be Creek. So those two positions, the only thing that changed on that. But the commission was, when we talked about the commission back, um, Mr. Wand and everybody was at the commission uh, at River Spirit. Um, yeah, matter, matter of fact, um, Jeff Fife had got up and spoke about how we need a commission in place and we used to have one many years ago, and so it's putting that back in place, and it probably takes the, the heat off and gives you guys some more direction to probably help you a little bit more. So that's how we looked at it. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Jones. Chief Phillips, you, you have the floor? Or? I'd like to have more time to look at this for sure. I mean, I know it's the same, but, I mean, you're not going to buy a car without test driving it. I'd like to have more time to look at. Yeah. Well, I don't think we're going to postpone it tonight, though. So I'm not making that motion. Um, Is there any other discussion? Representative Henry? Okay, I'm sorry. Representative Yellow Osborne. Yes, sir. Thank you, Speaker. Um, I'm just going to say that I cannot support this tonight because I feel it's important that all parties involved are have a seat at the table so that we can determine as you know as one whole unit how this should play out so i'm just going to say this i cannot support this tonight thank you thank you representative hold on representative huff yeah i i'm on in favor with mr hola because that last time we talked uh i remember she specifically asking mr jones to get together with him to discuss this bill and i think it's a, i think the bill is good but i think it's important that we all come together and all agree that this is not just the council that's making the decision. At least with the executive branch also, even though I know the justice AG had it okay with it, but I think the chief's office needs to be involved in making a decision on this also. And there's some things that I, I, I think I would I would change also even if this bill come forward. And one of the things I, I would I would probably want to change is that there you know there's five commissioners that you know with the council approves three which is great, but then the other two shouldn't is approved is picked by a chief that we approve it's like basically we're picking all five. Like that should be a, to be fair, he should get just two people without having been confirmed to the council. That's how I feel about that. But I can't support the bill tonight from the very fact that it hasn't been uh, discussed. The chief's office actually said they were going to do it like last or last meeting. And I think, I don't know if we, if we have to wait till you know, July meeting, which is the third, 31st of July, which is two weeks away. We could wait until uh, Mr. Phillips had time to review the bill and also get with the chief and let him review it. And, you know, maybe they have changes or no changes at all, but I think I would like to see it just postpone until. July 31st, which is two weeks, which doesn't make that much difference between what we need to do tonight. That's my opinion. Thank you, Representative Hope. Any other discussion? Representative Lowe. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, Chief, when the Attorney General, Chief Hill, when the Attorney General is reviewing this or his office, did he review it on your behalf? He did not. Okay. Thank you. Hello, Speaker. That's all I need to know. Thank you, Representative Lowe. Representative Jones. Thank you, uh, Speaker. Chief Hill, yesterday, I believe you sent me a text to visit with you um, at the last minute, you know, and we've been talking about this all since last week. And we actually talked about Attorney General um, looking over it, to go over it, uh, see what changes need to be made. And, you know, it seems like that's kind of the last minute reach well that was, that was one of my questions uh what's the urgency of this i mean we want to make sure we do it right but all the parties weren't involved uh, i know you discussed it with the attorney general but uh, chief of police police department it would be like me setting up legislation for attorney general i don't know what their office do you know that, that's their expertise so there was no involvement with with the chief of police here we did do the same thing communicate with jeff five all the ones that was on commission took their report, reviewed it, um, which we had the one, we had two different versions, see which one that was going to get with you. Let's just communicate, put all of them together, see which one we can agree with. Um, 
Because as of right now, if this does pass, there's nothing that states what happens now to him. Does it go away, the chief of police, or does he stay? When does this actually start and finish? There's nothing in there. Because his term actually by law ends when my term ends, when the principal chief terms in. There's nothing in the law and states that. It says it's effective immediately, but you got to get all the five commissions first to even start that process. So are we out of a chief of police and deputy until we get someone in place or what? It's, it's real, you know, there's still some work that needs to be done to it, in my opinion. Representative Jones. Still discussion. Any other discussion? I make most postpone. I make motion we postpone until our their session in July, July thirty first. Motion has been made by Representative Huff to postpone until regular session on July thirty first. Second. Seconded by Representative Yahola Osborne. I, well, also with with that in mind, Chief Officer, you need to get if if this passes, it'd be on you, your half. Make sure you got Mr. Jones. If it doesn't happen, then I'd say we'd go on what we have. So that's I want to make that as a point. Thank you, Representative Huff. Representative Jones. Thank you, Speaker. I mean, we've been talking about doing stuff that's detrimental to Creek Nation since the McGirt. We've won McGirt, and we were a standstill still yet. Um, our light horse department has struggled. I felt like um, on and on. Um, not because of the chief, Chief Phillips, not because of you, not not directly because of, of, of um, Light Horse Wayne. It's just that there's some things that need, you guys need some help with. And, um, you know, all these other agencies that we're having to deal with, we're having to, we're sinking money into Light Horse over and over. So you guys are underworked, uh, overworked, and, and, you know, it's, it's we've got to find something that helps you guys because it's not fair. To you or to the citizen because we've got people that um you know we try to help somebody this weekend that was um uh, an individual's been in jail four to five days you know that's uh, it's not fair to our citizens you know and, and mcgirt is a good thing for us but we got to figure it out um, we've let the commission be in place under chief um, for almost a year now or right out a year now and nothing's happened it's been a slow process that things should have been under the council where everybody's together and making these decisions together because it, it's a, it's hurting the whole nation, you know. So all that together is that, yeah, I'll make a, I'll agree to um, postpone this to the end of the month, but uh, we've got to come to an agreement to get some things done. You know, as far as looking at, you know, commissioners and, and uh, that's got to be in place and, and looking at cabinet members, you know, Creek Nation fails because, it runs over into one administration you can't get cabinet members. And those cabinet members need to be Creek Nation cabinet members, not a chief's cabinet member. You know, because that's where it fails the citizen. Every four years we get a new chief in place, they're going to save the nation. It doesn't happen. What happens is our citizens, it hurts the citizen. So at the end of the day, I always support pushing it to the end of the month. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Jones. Representative Jennings. Thank you, Speaker. <clears throat> uh, the one question I have is, what, what is the time frame are we going to put on having these commissioners in place? And, you know, 30 days after the legislation. No. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Jennings. Representative Lowe. What up, Speaker? Uh, I just want to commend Adam Jones on his comments. I, I think that's uh, great to support the postponement. I think it's time, you know, we sit down and work together on this. And, you know, Chief Phillips, I hope you take a really thorough look at that and can can give us some good guidance. I think, uh, you know, there is one portion in there. I believe it's the administrative assistant. I strongly feel that if they're going to be managing people, that it should be more than a high school diploma. But that's just my two cents as an HR professional. So, Mado, Mado, speaker. Thank you, Representative Lowe. 
Any other discussion? Representative Yohola Osborne. Yes. Um, Deputy Chief Wynn, would you like to comment? Sure. Good evening, Council Speaker. I was the chairperson for the law enforcement and public safety on the Reservation Protection Commission. We did discuss this, but we also discussed it with the understanding that it's not something that was going to happen overnight because it had to be done correctly. So we weren't looking at something to happen in six months. Deputy Wynn. Sir. I apologize, but motion on the floor is to postpone right now. So yes, as, far as, the, as far as that type of discussion, it'll, yes, it'll sir, understand. be put on hold. So. Thank you. My Thank apologies. You. So is there any more discussion on the uh, postponement? Hearing none, the motion is to postpone until July 31st, 2021, regular session. Roll call vote, please. Robert Hoft? Yes. James Jennings? Yes. Adam Jones? Yes. William Lowe? Yes. Anna Marshall? Charles McHenry? Yes. Thomas Yohola Osborne? Yes. Daryl Proctor? Yes. Lucian Tiger? Mary Crawford? Yes. Joyce Deer? Yes. Joseph Hicks? Yes. Speaker, you have 12 in favor, zero against. 12 in favor, zero against to postpone until July 31st, regular session. Speaker, I want to make one comment. You know, we made a postponement and everybody's heard it. The deadline is July 31st. So if you don't receive something, Ask to get no. Thank you. Okay, next item on the agenda is a uh, special prosecutor engagement. I believe we have Zeke Fletcher on the line. Fletcher. Uh, yes, sir, Speaker. I uh, appreciate it. Um, I, I, frankly, I don't have any updates. Um, uh, I was not able to uh, to find any individuals uh, uh, in time for the uh, meeting this evening to speak with the council. Um, there was uh, one individual that uh, thought he was going to be able to uh, interview with the, the council and uh, uh, sent me a text uh, declining, saying that uh, he had too much going on. Um, so, uh, in, in my calls to the uh, the bar association uh, uh, were not returned. Um, so I've, I've not been able to get uh, any any traction as far as that goes. Okay, thank you, Mr. Fletcher. So, so basically, council tonight, there's nobody to present as far as a special prosecutor. So, as of right now, we still have no, no names mentioned. I know uh, Representative Freeman had a name or two, but he didn't. He didn't get any return calls, so Representative Jones. Speaker, what about the gentleman that came first? Uh, His name's still in the special prosecutor uh, that Zeke's brought to us, Mr. That, Davis. That would be up to the council. Zeke? Uh, yes, sir. Representative Jones uh, was asking about the uh, first gentleman that you had brought forward. Yes, uh, he, he still is uh, remains interested. Yes. Make a motion we hire Mr. Davis as special prosecutor. Motion made by Representative Jones to hire Mr. Davis as a special prosecutor. Second. Five second. Second by Representative Hicks. Discussion. Representative Marshall. Is it possible to renegotiate his uh, the amount that he was charging, since we'll be covering his travel and everything else? Mr. Fletcher, did you did you hear that comment or question? Uh, yeah. Yes, uh, Representative Marshall. Um, uh, I do have a request into him to see if there's any modifications that can be made to uh, his hourly rate. Uh, I've not heard back uh, on, on that question, but um, 
I, I can certainly make that request and see if the uh, the law firm will allow him to do that. Um, but I, I don't have any uh, definitive uh, answers on that question. Thank you, Representative Marshall. Any other discussion? Representative Ho. Yeah, I, you know, I know we haven't had anybody, found anybody, but I, I have a problem with the cost of being that high, you know, on hourly rate that, that high uh, for the prosecutors. So if he can't, you know, we don't know if he ever negotiated with us or not. If he can't, then I can't support the bill tonight with that cost. Thank you, Representative Ho. Representative Jennings. Thank you, Speaker. So uh, can we not uh, go through uh, the uh, Creek Nation? Bar Association and, uh, have a request for RFPs for people to apply for that rather than have somebody come from out of state that large salary and less uh, expenses. So uh, I'd, I'd, I'd like to at least see if we could get some response from the Big Nation Bar Association. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, Representative Jennings. Mr. Fletcher? Yes, sir, Speaker. Did uh, did you reach out to the uh, Bar Association, even the Scotia Creek Nation? Uh, it, yeah, I, I uh, made phone calls to all the officers, um, uh, and I, I did not get any return calls from the, the president, the vice president, or the, uh, the, the secretary slash treasurer of, of the Bar Association. Thank you, sir. Any other discussion? Hearing none, motion on the floor is to hire Mr. Davis as a special prosecutor. Roll call vote, please. Adam Jones? Yes. William Lowe? Yes. Anna Marshall? Yes. Charles McHenry? No. Thomas Emiola Osborne? No. Daryl Proctor? Yes. Lucian Tiger? Yes. Mary Crawford? Yes. Joyce Steer? Yes. Joseph Hicks? Yes. Robert Hoft? No. James Jennings? Speak you have eight in favor, four against. Eight in favor, four against. That motion passes. Ms. Fletcher, will you reach out to uh, Mr. Davis, please? I will, Speaker, yes. Thank you, sir. Okay, that concludes the order of business. Announcements. Any announcements? The uh, at-large meeting in Dallas, Texas is July 16th and 17th. So, any other announcements? Hearing none, entertain a motion to adjourn. Representative McHenry made a motion to adjourn, seconded by Representative Marshall. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. This time, I'd like to ask uh, Representative Deer to do the benediction, please. <clears throat> Amen. Thank you, Representative. Meeting adjourned, 704. <laughs>